we have a magnetic field. And for simplicity, yes, Tim? This, there's a lot of hubbub today. I'm not a fan of hubbub. If you have a question, I would love to answer it. Let's say we have a constant magnetic field and we have a piece of metal flying to the right with a certain velocity. And before you start tutting this, saying how will we ever have a flying piece of metal in a magnetic field, realize this is an airplane. Right? I'm just making it look a little bit easier. Also, it's the, the airplane isn't in a constant magnetic field because the magnetic field is changing. But this concept is applicable to an airplane. This actually happens to an airplane when you're flying on the Earth. There are other places we fly from airplanes, many. Okay, so here we go. If the velocity is to the right, this metal piece of uh, this metal material has charges in it. For example, it probably has some positive charges in it that are moving in a magnetic field. They are moving to the right. The magnetic field is into the board, and therefore a positive charge is going to feel a force upward, right? A negative charge is going to feel a force then downward. So what we get here is we're going to get a magnetic force on positive charges up, and negative charges will feel a magnetic force that is down. In other words, we're going to collect positive charges up here and negative charges down here. We will have a potential difference on the uh, item itself. Now, because of this, what we end up with is, if we look at it a moment later, we're eventually going to get to the point where if we're flying at a constant velocity, we have gathered as many positive charges as we can here and as many negative charges as we can here. Because if we have positive charges here and negative charges here, we have set up an electric field. There is actually an electric field now in this airplane wing, if you will, which is oriented in that direction. So if we look at a positive charge on this airplane wing, it's going to feel a magnetic force. We already determined that that magnetic force on the positive charge is going to be up. It's going to feel an electric force. Which direction? Uh, go ahead, class, that's fine. It's going to feel a force down. The electric force is going to be down. Which means we can now sum the forces in the y direction. We have the magnetic force, which is up, minus the electric force, which is down. Assuming we're moving at a constant velocity and we've reached equilibrium, that is going to mean that the mass times the acceleration in the y direction of this whole thing is going to be equal to zero. In other words, the magnetic force is equal to the electric force. What is the equation for the magnetic force? Um, match. Uh, QVB sin theta. QV cross B or QVB sine theta. The equation for the um, electric force. You F over Q is equal to what? The electric, field. the electric field. So if I'm solving for the electric force, the electric force is going to be equal to charge times the electric field. So it's going to be equal to charge times the electric field. We could be equitable, we could take charge from everyone. We have velocity times magnetic field times sine of equals the electric field. The angle here is the angle between the velocity and the magnetic field. In our particular example here, Loki, that angle is? The angle between the velocity. The velocity and the magnetic field is going to be the sine of 90 degrees. The sine of 90 degrees is just 1. So we get that the velocity times the magnetic field is equal to the electric field. OK. Well, electric potential difference. We've already shown that this is going to be a constant electric field. The electric potential difference in a constant electric field is equal to, Mr. P? 
Don't worry, you only need to remember everything. I <laughs> That would be in a current carrying wire, which this is not. Oh. I asked for the electric potential difference for a constant electric field. Gary. <laughs> oh, that's sad, isn't it? A little bit. I mean, you got you got to remember everything. Come May 14th, or if you prefer, the final exam, which we will be before that. Just depending on how you get it. Catherine. Negative ED. Now, I'm only concerned about the magnitude of the electric potential difference, so we're just going to take the magnitude of both sides, take the absolute value, get the electric potential difference equals E times D. We have the electric field. It's equal to uh, the velocity times the, the magnetic field. So the electric potential difference equals the electric field times the, uh, times the velocity times the magnetic field. Not duh. Sorry. <laughs> well, I'll try again is equal to the velocity times the magnetic field times d. Well, d is going to be the length of the airplane wing, if you will. And this is, the EMF is going to be equal to VBL. This is specifically called motional EMF. The idea that a metal object moving through a magnetic field will get an electric potential difference on the object, and it's equal to VBL. This is not on your equation sheet. You are responsible for knowing how to derive this. Please notice that this assumed that the angle was 90 degrees, and that is not always the case. Sometimes it could be something entirely different.